The graduation address gives us the opportunity to hear from a distinguished member of our alumni community. We're very fortunate today that the address will be deli delivered by Professor Jayashri Kulkarni. Professor Kulkarni is a professor of psychiatry at Monash University and the Alfred Hospital. She founded and directs the Monash Alfred Psychiatry Research Centre, which is one of Australia's largest and most innovative centres for clinical mental health research. It's a world leader in the translation of cutting edge neuroscience discoveries into innovative life changing treatments for people with mental illness. Professor Kulkarni is a passionate advocate of patient focused mental health research. And with more than a third of mental health, uh, sorry, mental illness sufferers not responsive to current treatments, she believes there is an urgent need for investment in clinical psychiatry research so that new and effective treatments for mental illness can be developed. Professor Kulkarni was recognised for her contribution to medicine, particularly psychiatry, by being made a member of the Order of Australia in June 2019. Ladies and gentlemen, I now have much pleasure in inviting Professor Jayashri Kulkarni to deliver today's graduation address. Before I begin, I would also like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land that we are meeting on and to pay my respects to their elders, past, present and emerging. A special acknowledgement to the Monash University Chancellor, Mr Simon McEwen, AO, the Provost and Senior Vice President, Professor Susan Elliott, AM, members of faculty, ladies and gentlemen and everyone in between and beyond, and in particular, congratulations to all the graduands, the award winners, to your family and friends, and to your teachers who are represented up here. It's an incredible honour and a privilege to be here with you today. So, for the new graduands, for the people who have done their first degree in particular, your next big journey begins now. Part scary, part exciting. For many of you, particularly those who have come straight from school, you in your course have had clear markers and milestones all the way through. It's been a set course. It's as if you were on a plane, on an aeroplane with a set destination. From school, you were deposited at an airport called Monash University. And for a while, you may have wandered around tasting the free alcohol samples, the perfume sachets and so on. But the staff and administrative people in uh, Monash University gently guided you onto the next big flight, which was your particular course, your course in healthcare. Now, during your healthcare course, some of you got high distinctions all the way, and it was like you were in first class, sitting there shipping, sipping champagne and tasting the caviar. For others of you who got borderline passes or had to repeat parts of the course, it's kind of like you flew here in economy class and you had to cope with sitting scrunched up with your knees around your ears, packed in tight between a screaming child on one side and a vomiting man on the other, and your film audio system was broken as well. However, all of you finished your Monash University degree, either with a distinction or not. One way or another, you got to this destination. Yes, here you are at graduation, kind of like being in Dubai Airport. So now what? Just like in a big airport, you've got many options from now on. You can take a familiar flight, you can go back home, you can get fast to the gate by not having to walk and sit on an electronic cart, or you can run fast on the travelator to the nearest, richest place to make a lot of money. Or you could choose any other destination you like. Here's another option. You could choose to build your own aircraft even as you're up in the air. That's the groundbreaking innovator's pathway. 
And in healthcare, we desperately need you to be innovators and follow your idea, follow your passion that revolves around innovating healthcare and a deep desire to help people. Let me tell you about my passion, which sprang from working with a patient. We'll call her Emma, that's not her real name. I met Emma when she was 26. She'd been admitted to psychiatry wards on 10 occasions with deliberate self-harm, depression and anxiety. Her official diagnosis was borderline personality disorder. It's a term I absolutely abhor and I'm making it one of my campaigns to try to get rid of that term. Why? Because when I went back and looked at Emma's story and really listened and spent a lot of time with Emma, what emerged was that she had actually been the victim of several years of terrible abuse by her mother's boyfriend. And as a result, she had developed terrible problems with very poor self-esteem, anger, anxiety, poor concentration and poor memory. All of those things made it impossible for her to study or to hold down a job or to hold down a meaningful relationship. And yet she had been called borderline personality disorder, making it somehow her fault, her fault that she was an inadequate person with a personality disorder. Now you can see why I really, really don't want that particular term because of all the stigma that it confers. What she actually has is a form of post-traumatic stress disorder and it's been my passion, along with many other, to improve the understanding and the care for the many Emmas, and unfortunately there are more Emmas appearing every day in our community. To do this, I've been very fortunate to develop multi-pronged research and multi-pronged clinical services. It's been my privilege to work with neurobiologists, brain imaging experts, neurochemists, laboratory-based researchers, psychologists, social workers, cognitive therapists, legal representatives, nurses, occupational therapists, and many, many other health professionals to develop new treatments. To then translate those treatments into clinical practice, I've needed incredible assistance from my health service colleagues. And to educate health professionals about what's best for Emma, how not to stigmatise her. We need health promotion, we need educationalists. So you can see that in fact, in order to make change in the healthcare system, we need all of you. This is one of my passions, to improve the healthcare system for Emma. It is like building my own aeroplane as we're up in the air because there's a lot of Emmas coming in through the doors. That's enough about my passion, but here you are at the threshold of your next decision, your big airport decision. By all means, take some time to buy gifts for your loved ones in the duty-free shops here. But then, I urge each and every one of you to look out for your Emma. It may not be that a person who inspires this passion, it could be a data set, it could be a question, but get passionate, find your cause. I urge you, even if you're in the workplaces now, to ask questions. If you meet Emmas in your workplace or other people like that, ask, why are we doing this in terms of management? Don't just settle for the status quo. And it's never a good enough answer from the clinicians you meet to say, we've always done this. Talk to people outside your direct area. Talk to that IT expert, who doesn't really get to talk to a lot of people, but go talk to that person. Because they've got a different system, they've got a different way of thinking. Keep on learning, keep on being curious. We're never gonna solve the big questions by doing the same old, same old. It's always important for each of you, whatever your field, to strive to push forward. Be that annoying person who goes, but why, why? It's really important. You'll actually prompt 
the jaded, cynical people in your workplace to question themselves, hopefully. You've all got incredible talents, incredible skills, and it's really important that you use your keen intellect to lift up people who are desperately suffering. I hope each of you can make a positive difference to someone's life, whether it's working at an individual level, whether it's through research, answering a broader question, whether it's advising on policies, or through education, or through systems management. There's many, many doors that are open for you, but the end game is the same, to improve healthcare. I wish you great joys for the years ahead, and I hope that when the turbulence hits, as it inevitably will, that you are well able to deal with it. So, graduates, you are about to take off for your next great adventure. Please fasten your seat belts and put your tray tables into the upright position. Thank you. Thanks very much, Jay Ashri. And all I can say is that if you felt that that was only directed to um, the graduates in front of us, I'm not sure that that's right, because frankly, everyone in this auditorium got a message out of that, I know. Um, you're absolutely right. Whether the graduates have come here in first class or economy, whether you've had a, an easy ride or a ride full of distractions and obligations that you've had to balance on the outside, as Jayashree says, you are at a place where big decisions ought to be made. Jashri shared with us her own passions about taking on, taking on a health system. Massive part of humanity, certainly in a country like ours, which can spend on health. But some things we've done the same way for a very, very long time, and Jayashri is one of those who says we can do better, we can innovate. And as she shared with us, sometimes it's as simple as getting the right words, getting the right language. But change is often difficult, especially when we're up against a system which has done things in a way for a long time. Jayashri emphasised, find your own cause. And everybody in the room, continue finding our own cause as life goes on. Parents are important, close friends, they've all got ideas as to what our cause might be, but ultimately we have to own it ourselves. Because when we get the right cause, isn't it interesting how it brings the best out in us? Jayashree said, be inquisitive, keep asking questions, ask questions. Which leads automatically to just keep on learning. Ancora impara. It's not actually a Latin name which most universities have as their motto, we got an Italian one, not quite so old as the, uh, the Roman language. But it's the words that are important, namely, we keep on learning, whether you're 18 or whether you're 80. And um, all I can say, Jayashri, is thanks for those very precious words this morning. Can we applaud again, Jayashri? Yeah.